Okay, let's start talking about actual practical technical stuff. This video is all about aperture, what it is, how it affects exposure, and how it has a creative effect on your pictures as well. This video is part of my Technical Fundamentals Basics course, which is building week by week into an entire course for beginners in photography. You're welcome to come back every Friday afternoon when I put a fresh video up. Otherwise, it might make more sense to subscribe to my channel because then, of course, you'll get notified as soon as a video appears. Do hit like if you like what I'm putting out there. And if you think I haven't covered something, do stick a comment below and I'll do my very best to answer it. First control I want to talk about is aperture. Now, aperture is simply a posh word for a hole. It's as simple as that. What you've got within a lens is a series of interlocking blades okay, that close down to create a smaller hole and open up to create a larger hole. Now obviously a larger hole lets a lot of light in and a small hole doesn't let much light in. That's it really. The only bit that gets really confusing is that smaller holes have larger F numbers and larger holes have smaller numbers. For example the smallest hole on most lenses these days tends to be numbered F22 and then at the other end of the scale a larger hole might be F2.8, F1.4 to trial for confusing, don't worry about why for now, doesn't really matter, okay? I'll now demonstrate what, what I'm talking about using this lovely little old-fashioned large format lens which will give you a nice clear view of the interlocking blades. So let me try and demonstrate for you how an aperture actually functions within a lens. Now for this, I'm using a large format lens which isn't something you see very often. The reason being, I can demonstrate much better with this than I could with a conventional lens because the workings are much clearer and easier to view. Now to start with, we can see the aperture scale around the lens here. You can see the numbers, that 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22, 32, 45, and all around here to 64. Now don't worry about how far the numbers go in other direction, that, that varies from lens to lens, but the point is at this end, at f5.6, the smaller number, the aperture is wide open. If we look through the lens, we can see right through the lens there, okay, at f5.6. If I take this dial and push it all the way around to its furthest extent, which is in this case f64, now we look through it, the aperture is closed right down. And now I'll slide the dial back and forth, so we're going from f64 all the way around to f5.6. You can actually see the blades of the aperture opening and closing, okay. At this end of the scale, is f5.6, small number. At this end of the scale, quite hard to reach because the shutter release is in the way, is f64. Okay, large number, small hole. Small number, large hole. It's also worth noting the very obvious fact that when the aperture is wide open like this, it lets a lot of light in. And of course, when it's down like this, not a lot of light gets in. So that's the basics of how an aperture works. Let's move on to how it properly affects exposure. We know that a large hole has a small F number and a small hole has a large F number. You've seen that demonstrated with that large format lens. Here is the scale, okay, You're using common aperture numbers that you'll find on the average camera. This end of the scale, the smaller numbers, F1.4, represents a large hole, the largest aperture you can get on this lens, this hypothetical lens we're talking about, all the way down this end to f45, which is a very small hole, okay? And the size of the hole increases as the numbers decrease, and vice versa. Now the other important thing to remember is if you look back to the video we did right at the very beginning about the basic principles of exposure, you'll remember that exposure is measured in stops. The difference between these aperture numbers is one whole stop. Okay, so from f1.4 to f2 is one stop, from f8 to f11 is one stop in either direction. Okay, so going from f8 to 11 is one stop and the other way is one stop. The other thing to remember with apertures is that as you go from one stop to the next, you are either letting in half as much light or if you go the other way, letting in twice as much light. Okay, let that sink in. So as you go from f2 to f2.8, you are closing the aperture by one stop, that is letting in half as much light. And if you went in the other direction, if you went from f16 to f11, you would be opening the aperture up by one stop and letting in twice as much light, okay? Make sure you understand that because it's a very, very fundamental principle of how aperture works.
Okay, let me demonstrate that idea of letting in half as much or twice as much light using this lovely simple picture of these wooden ducks. Now we're starting here with what we deem to be the correct exposure. Now if I close the aperture down by one stop, it gets noticeably darker. Even more so when I close the aperture down by two stops. Going in the other direction from the correct exposure, if I open the aperture up by one stop, it gets obviously lighter, and by two stops, a lot lighter. Okay, because in this instance I've let in twice as much and then four times as much light. One thing you should have appreciated if you were paying attention to the basic introduction to exposure video that I put out last week is that of course this only changes, it only gets lighter or darker because the camera is in manual mode. If I was in any other form of automatic exposure mode then as I make changes to the aperture the camera would make corresponding changes and keep the exposure the same. This is why at the end of the last video I made such a point about making sure you're in manual mode so that you can see the effects these changes have. Otherwise, you won't understand what I'm talking about when I say one or two stops darker or brighter because your camera will always be compensating. One last little technical point before we go on to talk about the creative effect that Aperture has is to do with the numbers themselves. Now, I can assure you that unless you want to really, really geek out knowing about the progression of that number sequence that you saw, 2.8, 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, blah, 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 and knowing why those numbers, not 7 or 3 point something, you do not need to know that. Knowing that will not make you a better photographer in any way. The only thing you really need to know about those numbers is that they are the same no matter what the lens. So let's say you've arrived at the perfect exposure using, in this case, an 85mm lens, and it tells you you need to be at f8 but you've realized, oh, this isn't actually the right lens for the job, I need to be on a 50mm lens, the exposure will be the same. It should still be f8 on this lens, if you've got the correct exposure, f8 on this lens. That's the more important thing to know about the numbers, as you change lenses, it means you can be consistent from shot to shot as you change the focal length of your lens. Don't worry about the numbers otherwise, it really doesn't matter that much. Right, let me try and describe to you what creative effect changing the aperture has. Now, the main thing aperture affects is what's called depth of field. Now, depth of field very simply means the amount of your image which is in focus around the point that you've chosen to focus on. So that means how much in front of that point you've focused on is also in focus and how much behind that point is in focus. So looking at this image in front of us here, we have got something that is approximately 18 inches or so from the camera and we can see that the buttons on the remote controls are sharp, that's the point I focused on, and almost everything in front of that, sort of closer to the camera, is out of focus, and almost everything behind that is out of focus. This is a small depth of field, okay, so just the area that we focused on is in focus, almost nothing else. Now, you get a small depth of field with a large aperture, in this case f2.8, okay, so a small aperture number, but a large aperture, gives you a small depth of field. If we close the aperture down by two stops to f5.6, you'll see a difference. You'll see the text on the spine of the book start to come into focus, more of the buttons on the remote control come into focus, and the bookcase in the background starts to become more visible and a little bit sharper. Now, I have not changed the point that I am focused on. As I say, all that's happened is the depth of field has increased, so the area around that point of focus has increased. Now if we go another two stops down to f11, we'll see another dramatic change. Now the text on the book, spine of the book is very, very clear. Almost all the buttons on the remote controls are pin sharp. And the books in the bookcase in the background are starting to become more and more in focus. And all the way now down to the smallest aperture that this lens will do, which is f22. And now we are sharp from the text on the spine of the book through the buttons on the remote control, almost to the point where we can read the text on the books that are something like eight feet to maybe nine feet away from the camera. Now, I have not changed the point of focus. As I stress, I'm still focused on the same point I was focusing on in the first image at f2.8, but because I have stopped my aperture down and made my aperture smaller, I have increased the amount of depth of field I've got. Now, just to be thorough, depth of field is also affected by other factors such as how close you are to the thing you're focusing on and what focal length of lens you're using, but for now we're just going to worry about aperture. All you've got to remember is if you want lots of depth of field, so a large depth of field, you need a small aperture, which is a large F number, and if you want a very small depth of field, you want a large aperture, which is a small F number.
Right, that's pretty much all the basics you need to know about Aperture. But before we move on to shutter speed next week, one little thing I want to draw your attention to. Now, having watched all that and absorbed all the principles, you probably think to yourself, right, I've got it. I just need to pick the aperture I want for the exposure I want and the depth of field that suits my photograph. Yes, with a but. Don't forget, as we went through last week in the basic introduction to exposure, the three facets of exposure, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are linked. And if you want to retain the same exposure in a shot, if you push in one area, you'll have to pull in another. So it might be that whilst you want a certain aperture to achieve a certain depth of field, let's say, the overall amount of light you've got limits your choices, or the shutter speed that you have to choose limits your choices. You can't get away from the fact that these three things are interlinked. Now we're going to come on to that in much more depth in upcoming videos as we talk about not just the other two facets, but how they all play together and how you use them. But for now, as I said before, if you like what I'm doing, stick a like down there, stick a comment below if there's a question you want answering, and of course to save you having to check in every Friday afternoon, subscribe to the channel and the videos will pop into your feed easy peasy. Happy snapping!